We would be honored if you would join us. Everyone's invited, of course. Hey Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, thanks for tuning in to another video. Today I just wanted to do a little video just sort of going over the the uh, Ralph McQuarrie concept figures from 2007's uh, 30th anniversary collection. Uh, there is one figure here that is from an older line, um, but yeah, they're all they're all sort of coming out. It was like one per wave uh, back in 2007. I do have a couple of duplicates of some troopers here, but yeah, just really wanted to go one by one and have a close look at some of these figures. So let's do that. So we're going to kick off with the Dark Lord himself. Darth Vader, check him out. What a cool looking design, great looking figure. Got the blue blade. Uh, figure's a little bit dated in terms of having this sort of swivel elbows there. They're not great, but um, it works okay for the figure. It's fine, I'm okay with it. Doesn't really need an update. This is a cool collection to, um, you know, they don't need updating. This isn't real Star Wars store sort of stuff that <laughs> We need updates of. Uh, the cool thing about this figure is it does come with an alternate helmet, which is probably a little bit more resembling of the Vader we know today. And I will just try and get a close up look at that. It's a little bit more angled in its appearance. Got a bit of an arrowhead sort of look down the uh, down the forehead there. My rebel sort of uh, use this as sort of inspiration for Vader's slightly animated helmet but yeah this one's really cool it's, um, it would be cool to have a second one to be able to display them both in different ways but this is cool I'm happy with this one interestingly Vader does have a blaster pistol as well which is cool Yeah, similar, pretty much similar outfit. But yeah, the helmet. That's, that's where the magic is. So cool. So next up, we have the Imperial Stormtrooper. If I focus this in, that would be fantastic too. I do have a couple of this guy. Now these are seen in a pretty, pretty popular piece of Macquarie art. You've probably seen it. Uh, they weren't bearing shields in that piece, I don't think, but uh, you're yeah, definitely wielding lightsabers. This is, an, this is an older figure, this was repacked, this was done for 2003 in the Saga line. As you can see there, they have a holster and a big big blaster there as well, much like Vader. They had blasters as well. Uh, the articulation's a bit lacking on this one, it's so simple um, hip joints. Uh, shoulders, swivel, elbows, neck, uh, maybe a waist joint there, yeah not a lot. So uh, yeah this one, it, it still fits the form and fits the shelf and all that sort of stuff so it's not a bad figure at all, really cool design. Sort of see where the uh, Imperial Stormtrooper sort of stemmed from. Definitely got a little bit more of a sci-fi vibe about it. So we're going to stick with the uh, we're going to stick with the Empire here, and we're going to go to the Imperial Snowtroopers this time. Now with this one, I do have them displayed differently, ever so slightly. So the uh, the sort of masks that come down the front here are removable. So you sort of get that look as well. I think I like it better with the uh, the big flap. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show both variations. So still got the uh, sort of iconic looking Snowtrooper backpack. That sort of very Macquarie sort of uh, writing on the side there. Really cool figures. The Snowtroopers, I'm, I'm a big fan of them. They look great. So now we'll go to Boba Fett, the uh, Super Commando, Imperial Super Commando, as he was originally intended. Now he does have interchangeable heads. 
and I do have a second one here this is another another idea for what fat may look like and if you're a Clone Wars fan like myself you may recognize that they actually used this helmet again uh, when Obi-Wan went undercover as Bounty Hunter Reiko Hardeen they did come with that flame attachment there which is cool and the interesting thing is oh, I'll drop the other one on the floor that's okay is that he uh, does have a sort of a cybernetic innards which uh, I'm sure it's meant to be a secret blaster or a weapon but um Either way, it's cool. It's got the jetpack. So, yeah, it's still pretty iconic. That sort of old white Boba Fett. Looks good. I like this one a lot. Big rangefinder on his head, too. Another cool figure. So, now we'll look at the good guys. This here is a Rebel Trooper. A little bit of fluff stuck to him. <laughs> but I like this design. I like the blue suits. I know um, Star Wars Rebels certainly borrowed a bit of this. It sort of has this aesthetic about it the, the, uh, that they used in Star Wars Rebels. Um, sort of thinking along the lines of the helmet for Ryder Azadi. Which is removable. You just get a standard head sculpt. You can pop the head off and take the uh, bottom part off as well. Again, that sort of Macquarie writing on the back. That sort of armor piece is removable as well. So you could have a just sort of like a rebel leader, rebel soldier. Another great figure. That's a cool one. And most of them are going to end up on the floor, but that's fine. Give me something to do later. So we'll stick with the droids. Now we've got R2-D2 here. And you obviously see this is the inspiration for Chopper from Star Wars Rebels. Um, Rebels took a lot of inspiration from the original Macquarie art. Sort of this sort of squat looking droid uh, came in handy for Chopper. His little arms poking out the side. Absolutely fantastic. I do really love this look. And you can't have R2-D2 without his protocol counterpart, C-3PO. Which is still very, very metropolis looking. But uh, yeah, this is the, the, paint, the painting that, I, that was on the front of the book from the start of the video. That was the... Uh, that was the painting that lured Anthony Daniels into the world of Star Wars and allowed him to make that decision to uh, bring the droid to life. So yeah, very, very cool. I do like this figure a lot. Looks great. I actually like the weathering, the sort of brush strokes. I think that's really nice. It really lends itself to the uh, interpretation of the art. And now we'll get Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's a cool looking figure. I love the sort of, got a real samurai vibe about him. Just in the uh, outfit, looks fantastic. Long flowing robes, the sort of tassel at the front there. So lightsaber there were some that come with hilts they sort of just sort of snap in there on the belt can't remember if the blade on this one was removable or whether I've uh, glued it on I'm not sure some of them do get a bit loose every now and then but yeah that's the uh, one of the original ideas for Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi That's really cool. Speaking of Jedi Masters, here is Yoda. Another great looking figure. Really cool looking interpretation of 
the wise old Jedi Master. Still one of the really cool interpretations of him, I, I think. All the sort of long hair draping down the side of the ears. Bit of a Jedi mullet. <laughs> It'd be cool if they one day decide to uh, bring Grogu back and uh, give him a little bit more of a older <laughs> but still youthful appearance. Give him some hair like that. That would be cool. Got the feet underneath there, the legs. What a cool looking figure. It's been actually been a long time since I've taken these off the shelf to really appreciate them, but uh, yeah, I'm digging it. That's a cool Yoda. Great, great articulation on this one too. All right, so let's bring in another pair of inseparables. We've got Chewbacca here. I'm gonna have to move the camera. You know, another source of inspiration for Star Wars Rebels, obviously, just looking at his face there. That's Garazeb Aurelius. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Chew Chewy, he was actually wearing some clothes. Sort of belt. Got another small blaster in the holster there, as removal. He's got this big, big pulse sort of rifle here in his hand, which is cool. Yeah, he's still got that very uh, Lima. You know, Ralph really sort of decided to go with sort of Bigfoot with, with a Lima look. He's definitely got that look, bright yellow eyes. He's even wearing, wearing some boots. Really cool design. I'm glad they sort of uh, used this inspiration for Zeb. Zeb's turned into a fantastic character over the years. And uh, it all goes back to Chewbacca. This is still a really, really great figure. I dig this one a lot. And you can't have Chewy without the dashing smuggler, Han Solo. Looks a little bit different here. <laughs> so he does have a lightsaber hilt on his belt there. He also has a holster. Uh, he has a cape. This is probably more so based on one of the designs for Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. There are a lot of a lot of different drafts for Star Wars that you can dig in, and the story changed a great deal. Um, there was a great Dark Horse comic series years ago that was like a based on the Lucas draft, one of the Lucas drafts, and Luke was actually a retired veteran Jedi Knight, so you know, he looks very similar to this, maybe a little bit older, but uh, yeah, this is meant to be Han Solo. Really cool. I would have liked to have seen the uh, Han Solo that was originally like a green alien. A really cool look. Again, very sci-fi. Alright, now we're getting down to the last couple. This is meant to be the interpretation of Leia, but it is the figure is known as Star Killer. Starkiller Hero, um, Deke Starkiller perhaps. Uh, this was an idea when George was still thinking about using uh, a female as the main main protagonist, which we didn't see until The Force Awakens with Rey. So in some ways, this is a very very early interpretation of Rey from the sequel trilogy. But yeah, loving the design, loving the sort of outfit here. There is a way to get that sort of mask to sort of sit over her face. But uh, yeah, it's... Definitely tell. I take... Pop the mask off. I don't think I've actually ever done it, so... Very youthful sort of uh, female appearance there, which is cool. Again, we all know how much these 
these films go, these stories go into changes and they go through changes and different appearances and yeah this is a very nice one. I like the big boots, it's a purple undersuit, again sort of life support system so they can breathe in the uh, vacuum of space. That was one of the original ideas. So they basically released this figure as as a uh, fill-in for Leia, basically. Alright, so last one we have Luke Skywalker. You've seen this one in the concept art. He's facing down Vader. He has the lightsaber held back behind him like so and you get Vader in the foreground like that so this one's cool I love the idea of the mask here really lending itself to his heritage of Vader I know that wasn't wasn't the idea back then but again, sort of echoing the Star Killer Hero suit. This sort of purple life support system. The mask is removable, so you can sort of pop that back. But uh, yeah, the helmet on. It's definitely the cooler option in this point in this figure. Yellow lightsaber. That's cool. Again, sort of a spot, a clip there on the belt for the hilt blaster. Life support backpack. And just another really great figure. So that is going to wrap this video up guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below what you think, could have been a, a very different Star Wars <laughs> that we know, know today, if it wasn't for some of these, these characters. Ooh. Could have been very very different. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. Give the uh, video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, stay tuned for some more videos coming up. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may the force be with you, always. We're a little rushed, so if you'll just get on board, we'll get out of here.